This program is rated PG. It contains themes and scenes which may not be suitable for very young audiences. Parental guidance is advised. Be advised that the views and opinions of the hosts and guests do not reflect those of the station. Welcome, good evening, and welcome to Global Village. I'm your host, Buddy Kunanan, and uh, tonight's show is about sailing. You know, folks, in this show, we talk about everything on the sun, in particular, um, things related to the foreign community here in the Philippines, and tonight it's a very special show because we're talking about a multinational effort to develop sport and recreational sailing here in the Philippines, and uh, nice lineup this evening. Very interesting guests, starting with my, my partner tonight, in the set, on the set, Mr. Peter Storer, and he, I mean, Mr. Peter uh, Capotosto, mm -hmm. and he is the Commodore of the Taal Lake Yacht Club. Yeah. Michael Storer is coming up next, so mm -hmm. Peter, yeah. yeah. Welcome to Global Village. Thank you, buddy. Yes, and uh, you know, pleasure to have you here, and uh, it's such a nice topic because, you know, sailing is something that we in the Philippines live in, in an, in an, uh, an, isl an island country of 7,100 islands. And yet sailing is so unappreciated here in the Philippines. And to have you guys over here now to talk about what you guys are doing to develop sport and recreational sailing is, is, is really a good thing. Let's talk about your background first, Peter. You're an interesting character because you are a Filipino. Mm -hmm. But uh, tell us a bit about your background because you don't look Filipino. <laughs> but you are Pinoy. Go. Yeah, uh, well, I, uh, I was born uh, in 1956. And my father was the Commodore of the Manila Yacht Club at the time. Uh, and I started sailing when I was about 12 years old, and I have just I've continued that and continued that, and I've been promoting sailing uh, for many years, and we've gone through lots of different um, ups and downs in in the development of sailing, and I think we're definitely on an upside right now. What what got you into sailing? Because uh, was it something that your father, your family yes, got you into at yes, an early yes, age? They were no, enthusiasts. They, yeah, they were enthusiasts and. I think that's uh, getting into sailing is not that easy. You have because you don't you you know not everybody has a boat in their backyard, so you somehow have to get introduced to it. And 
uh, one of the reasons that sailing is popular in many other countries is that there has been a very, very long history of sailing in many of these other countries, whereas our history of sailing is quite different. Um, it's the, the paraos, and that, that has not, that, shall we say, that segment of society hasn't been the dominant yes. society, uh, segment of society. Yes. So we're taking people who now have no experience in sailing and getting them involved. Um, and um, although we have so many islands our, and our capital city is close to the water, um, not everybody wants to learn to sail on Manila Bay because it's dirty. Yeah. So now we have, um, but now we have Taal Lake Yacht Club, uh, which is only an hour and 20 minutes away from Makati. That's how long it normally takes me to get there. Um, and um, we now have a venue where we can promote and uh, the people that learn to sail there can go to, uh, of course, Manila Yacht Club where you have bigger boats um, that go longer distances, go to the other different yes. islands, or you can go to Punta Fuego, you can go to... Uh, Puerto Galera, you can go to Subic. These are all yacht clubs which are all developing and the people who learn at Ta'al Lake Yacht Club can either continue sailing in Ta'al Lake Yacht Club with smaller boats or they can go to these other clubs and sail in bigger boats. Yeah, okay, before we jump into Ta'al Lake Yacht Club, uh, you mentioned that you know one of the obstacles was not many people want to learn to sail in filthy Manila Bay, which mm -hmm. is, which is, you know, it, it is a reality. It's really heavily polluted. But another reason I mean, w that has held me personally and some of my friends back from learning how to sail is that the thought that it's prohibitive to learn how to sail. Like, it's something r reserved for the rich. You've got to be wealthy. You've got to be a member of Manila Yacht Club. You've got to have a yacht. How true is this? No, uh, that's <laughs> not really true. Um, it's a misconception, you, eh? Yes, it's definitely a misconception, and that's um, and I have been struggling with this misconception for years. Uh, in some senses, it's partly true, uh, because you have to decide, you know, are you going to own a boat, um, or are you going to be a very instrumental part of the running of that boat? See. That's a, that's a problem. A lot of people think that to get into sailing, you have to own a boat or why get into it if, you know, in your lifetime, you're realistic that you will never own a yacht, for uh, instance, no? a sailing yacht. A lot of times that the people who run the boat are not the owners of the boat. And uh, you have to, if there are 10 people that run, like the bigger your boat, the, the bigger your boat, the more complicated it is to run, the more people it takes to run it. So if you are an owner of a big boat, your biggest problem is not money because you have plenty of money. Your biggest problem is trying to find people who will be able to go and run your boat and ideally you want those people to be friends of yours. So uh, we have to target, when we look at sailing, we need to have three different strata of people that we are uh, targeting. One is uh, the people who will eventually own boats, who have plenty of money, uh, the other is the middle class, which is for this guy, these are the most important people. And then you have to have another uh, strata of society, which is going to be the people who will be either moving into the middle class or they are the people who are going to be um, the carpenters, the boat boys, the people that are going to clean the bottom of the boat. But sure. and ideally, they should know how to sail. They are the people who this guy will pay because he doesn't have enough of these people. Yeah. So he's got to pull these people into there and then he pays them. So it becomes, um, it's actually a net gain uh, in terms of income for many of the people that learn to sail. Yeah. It doesn't cost them, they're actually being paid to do it. Okay, let's talk about the local scene because you said the biggest problem of all these guys who have the, all these big boats or big yachts is to find the, the, the crew with the skills that will help him run the boat. What is the situation like today? How, how, how big is the sailing community or, or the recreational sailing community? Well, right now, I think that the recreational sailing community is at the stage where there are enough people with bigger boats because there are people who are buying boats sure. now yep. and they mm. need crew. Okay. All so, right. um, and they need crew who know what they're doing. Mm. So I think some of the programs that we are developing right now are designed exactly for that. Um, 
right now we have a program which hits all three different segments. Um, and so uh, you were saying yourself, you say, oh, you know, gee, I would, I would, that would be cool if I could, <laughs> if I could have a boat. And, and you know, I'm, I'm, I have a couple of guys who, like, so you're telling me, Peter, that uh, if I just get a couple of my carpenters, there you go. <laughs> so you are, you, there's you, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and you're starting out with a small boat now, yeah, yeah. maybe a boat which is going to cost maybe $1,000 or less. And then you, but you've got carpenters who you, you want to help build your boat. And so you're already, you're at this level and you will, by doing that, in a sense, you will already create a team. Yes, yes. And you will carry that team with you because you will learn and you will meet other people who will need crew. Yeah. And they'll take you and your people with you. But, but it really is still a very small community here, the sailing community or sailing enthusiasts are still quite limited. I'll tell you, I'll tell you honestly, I know a lot of people mm -hmm. and I only know one person who's really actively into sailing and he doesn't even live in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. I mean, he lives in, the, in, 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 in America. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so I don't know anyone who's really actively involved in this. Now, do you see this? I mean, has it, in, because you, you started the Owl Lake Yacht Club 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And has it grown a lot since you first started? Are there a lot of oh, people yeah. involved in the I mean, scene today? When, when I started the Owl Lake Yacht Club, we had like three boats. And then the, the next year, we had maybe six boats or seven boats. And then we went up to about 15 or 20. Now, in the club, physically today, as I speak and sit here, we probably have maybe 60 boats. Oh, wow, okay. So, um, very I, I good. Yeah, so I think definitely it's it's definitely on the upswing, um, and uh, what I also see is that we have um, we're, we had a regatta last week, uh, which was held in Punta Fuego. Um, again, upscale community. They had a problem running the regatta because they had small boats that wanted to race. They had big boats that uh, wanted to race. They couldn't race yeah. the two at the same time <laughs> because for the sure. guys who had the big boats couldn't race because the crew of the big boats were the guys who were racing the small, the small boats. boats. <laughs> so they couldn't race them at the same time. Yeah, they had to yes. have the Hobies and the geese yes, in yes. one weekend, and yes. then they had to have the bigger boats on an entirely different weekend. Yes, yes. So in, in that sense, it really is a small, still a small community because you can't have, the, as you said, it's the race at the same time. It's small, but yeah. it's growing exponentially. What is holding it back? As you, as you mentioned earlier, there's a misconception of it's, you know, very common misconception. It, it's for the rich and it's therefore prohibitive and all that. But as you mentioned, there are facilities. Like you could go to your place in Taal mm -hmm. uh, Lake Yacht Club and it's, it's affordable. I think Manila Yacht Club also offers sailing lessons. I think also aff affordable. Mm -hmm. What is holding the, this sport back? Um, I think, well, there's a couple of different things. Yeah. Um, and one is uh, just that if you're going to have a sport, you need to, and for people to know about it. Honestly, we're in a society now where you need to have television. Uh, that the, the news has to go out to people. It has to get out there some way. A lot of how the, 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 um, the news is getting out has been because we have this new thing called social media. So social media has allowed friends to contact friends. It's allowed other um, non-mainstream uh, sources of information to somehow penetrate. Yes, yes. Uh, and then, and with social media, you create your own news. You you start yes. looking for that. It's easy for you to to contact uh, somebody or a group, and then it can you can have a group that forms on social media and get information which you didn't have before. Um, and uh, so, in some ways, that is helping to offset the more traditional uh, media that is now just beginning to pick up sailing as a sport because technically it's possible. If you go way back to like say the 1800s or something, um, the only way that you heard about sport was probably in your newspaper. You, you heard about your basketball yes, game yes. maybe if it was even there, but the America's Cup or something, big sailing event well, that you would really hear about. But as technology changed, 
we move to, uh, to a, uh, a thing where television could cover indoor sports. Now we are seeing where television can cover outdoor sports in a way that has never been done before. We're seeing mountain I biking. See, I see where you're going with that. Yeah, yeah. And, and, uh, and sailing is a very, very difficult uh, environment. It is one of the most difficult environments in the world. Of course. Um, you got to battle the elements. It's battle rough. The elements, yeah. It's rough. Very you're technical. In, yes, you're, and, and the equipment. And you're, you're racing. So you want it as light as possible. And you don't have ground to stand on for a TV crew with yeah. a big, with a, with yeah. an old school camera. Old school <laughs> camera. Even, uh, even even now you have news yeah, the, yeah. the the new cameras. If you if you can't if it's not small enough to actually mount it on the boat, again you're you're still going to be you're still going to be out there. It's it's going to be far away. But so you're saying technology has really made the has really brought the action yes. right to our living rooms yes. of what goes yes. on really yes. in a sailing in a, in right. a Com competitive sailing boat. Right. So uh, we can see that now drones and things like that are, are much more uh, important now, uh, now now that they're available. We and can I, use that. Yeah, and I'm sure this is really, really going to go a long way in boosting interest for the sport, awareness and interest for the sport of recreational sailing, no? Um, okay, let's talk about your operation in Tal Lake. Um, what, what do you offer there? Uh, with Tal Lake, we have um, we we offer a place for people who have boats to keep their boats there, um, and uh, we can do that if you become a member of the club. It's very inexpensive. Um, you become a member of the club, you keep your boat there. It means that you can keep your boat at a discount if you're a member okay. of the club. We uh, also teach sailing there, so people who want to learn, they can come, they can learn, and then they get involved with other, as a club, you get involved with other people who are um, similarly, you know, they're like-minded and they so need so crew. It's, it's, it's a community, it's it building a community. It becomes a community, a community. Yes. and then again, you have, again, social media. So that kind, of a, that kind of an environment with all of those people, they can get together and then you, you're, able to go further and further and further. All of this technology is allowing us to reach out to, um, like you said, it's a very small segment of society now, um, but it's growing, uh, just like Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> it starts out small and it gets big really fast. Yes, and I saw the video we, we showed earlier, uh, and we've been showing videos of, of, of uh, clips mm -hmm. of the, the action at all, I can have to say, it, it does look like a, you know, a fantastic place to learn how to sail, and uh, it lo looks like a lot of good fun. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it expensive to, um, to, to learn how to sail? And here's a video again of, that we're showing. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is actually, this is the Oz Goose, whose designer, Michael Storer, we're gonna talk to later. And uh, this is actually on the lake, and this is part of your fleet in, yes. in, in, in Tal Lake Yacht yes. Club. Yeah. Yes, um, it, uh, when we teach sailing lessons, we divide the, the uh, cost into two different parts, the boat and the instructor. Um, and uh, so if you have a boat and you want to learn, you just get the instructor. If you don't have a boat, you don't, uh, then you get the instructor and the thing. You can rent an Oz Goose for about, uh, that's, that would be the, about the least expensive. It's about, I think, about 350 or 500 pesos a day. Wow, that's, uh, that's cheap, and, huh? And then your instructor is an hour on an hourly basis. All right. So you're probably- How much are we looking at here? 350 to 400 pesos an hour. All right. For, which is much cheaper than a golf pro. Definitely. Um, so, um, <laughs> and then, and you are sailing on the water by yourself from after your, say, 20, 30 minute lecture. You get on the water, your instructor's with you. He puts the tiller in your hand, which is the, like the steering wheel. And you're not the says, captain of the boat. And you're, yeah, you're there. He's, he's, he's holding the gas pedal, shall we say, yeah. but you're driving the boat. Bravo, and bravo. And then later on, and you know, within, the, within the day, um, you'll be you'll be doing probably almost everything, um, and uh, then you'll uh, either depending on depending on your um, how how well you understand it and take it all in stride. Everybody's different, um, so uh, 
in in a couple of days, you will probably you should get the hang of it. You'll have yeah, you'll have Very the hang good. of it, and you'll be sailing around like right outside the club, and being there in the club, right outside the club, you have people who are watching you. So if you really get so into it's trouble, safe, uh, you have a rescue, a rescue boat, boat and, and all you'll that. go out. And Bravo! And Very good. Peter, we have to pause for a break, but when you come back, Michael Storer is going to join us, and we're going to talk more about what you guys are doing to develop sports sailing, recreational sailing here in the Philippines. Of course, with Oz Goose. All right, so guys, stick around because more of Sailing for Everyone when Global Village returns. <laughs>